Welcome to another exciting episode of The Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Goy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. Today's going to be a really, really fun uh, episode. Not that they no, all sure. aren't, but today's going to be even more fun. Mm -hmm. You have a time machine, okay. and you can go back to 2002, 2001, and whatever it was that you were selling, uh, started selling online. Okay. What advice do you give you 20 years ago? Uh, quality, not quantity. Okay. Because I was always pushing my employees, like, we got to get 20 an hour, 25 an hour. And, you know, in their head, they are rushing through things, and the listings were missing something or making mistakes, too many mistakes. So I think that would be a big thing to have. You know, things sell for more money. Obviously, I would price things higher as well. Uh, if we're doing quality listings, you know, say, a, you know, if you're listing 30 SIs in an hour, and you want $8 a piece on them, well, now you're going to list half as many but you're going to get 15 a piece and then you're going to have better listings better quality scanning mm -hmm. no photos things like that interesting um if i could go into the past and give you two bits of advice i'm, I'm just happen to be two because no, we're not investing in things like well, i'm going to buy no 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 correct yeah, no. They're, they're <laughs> no no <laughs> definitely not no no you you were absolutely on what i what i was thinking i'm going to buy uh, the mike trout sign card for 500 dollars when he was a rookie and now it's worth four million Hey, look at this 86 Fleer box. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think back then, I think I did tell you two things, uh, two bits of advice that I think now you have embraced. But at the time, I, I think you used to get mad at me when I said them. eBay's always right. I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that the hard way. Yeah, you did. You did used to fight windmills, and you used to think, uh, you know, that you were. And, and I mean no disrespect to you when I say this, but you used to think that you were important to eBay and the post office. Yeah, and same. over time, you suddenly said, "Oh, they couldn't care about me as yeah. far as my size. Doesn't matter how big you are. You're, you're." And that's when I was smaller. <laughs> that is true. Um, I think the two pieces of advice that I gave you back then that I think you also would agree with now. Uh, number one. Yeah, you work hard. You don't work hard enough. I True. think I used to yeah. say that to you regularly because yeah. you were putting in, what, eight, ten-hour days probably back then. Yeah, yeah I would probably say uh, 60, 70 hours maybe. 60, 70 60. hours a week, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so six days a week, a ten is 60, yeah. so yeah. And I think the other one that I used to tell you all the time that I think you have really embraced is multiple streams of income. Yeah. I think that that was another <clears> one that <throat> I had mentioned to you all the time was, was very, very important. Mm -hmm. Um, now you're back in time. Okay. You see me. What advice would you give Paper Goy in regards to his eBay business? Let's see. I would say keep, uh, keep working on those minor league cards. You're really going to build up the top five seller. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. For you, well. Well, how about, how about, well, I let you think about it. I'll tell you no. what I would go back and tell me. Let you think about it a little bit. Um, Corner to market on four magazines. Yeah, buy yeah. every win magazine this side of the Pecos. <laughs> why don't I, why don't I, so you no. don't just, just. There's no wrong answers, right? <laughs> so you don't just go off on crazy talk, <laughs> off on crazy train here. Um, I don't know if I would be able to follow my own advice, but the advice that I would give myself would be, take more chances because mm -hmm. I am very, very conservative. And I think I stuck with the going and buying books, you know, buying the low end stuff yeah. because there were no risk involved whatsoever. And occasionally getting a diamond in the rough yeah. for way too long. Um, I, I think that I would go to auctions and you would see things that, you know, Books be going for twenty dollars a piece, and I'd be saying that's insane. Who would possibly right. pay twenty dollars for a book? And then I would go to the back and wait for the box lots in the back, and end up mm -hmm. buying a box of books for twenty dollars, and I'd get, you know, four hundred dollars out of that box. Do a lot of work listing twenty books. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. the guy who paid twenty dollars for the one book listed one book and got four hundred dollars back. <laughs> right, yeah. So I think that the advice I would give myself would be take more chances, um, because by nature I don't take chances. Um, so what advice would you give me 20 years oh, ago? Man, it's, it's still a tough one because I think what you do for yourself still works for you, like the free shipping. So if you, wasn't, you weren't doing it then, maybe do it back then or so, sooner. Obviously, I like your little, you know, you know, point three, you know one three for the years. Oh, right. So mm -hmm. It's easy. You know, we don't do that at our warehouse, which we could have done. But, um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a good one. Uh, I don't want you know. Obviously, you don't want to grow too big, so I can't say be like me. That's true you know, too. So you know, I'm, you've seen the headaches that I had with the employees and the warehouse and all that. So you know, I wouldn't th- wish that on anyone sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, you know, for your situation, I think you maximize your potential and you know, and your profits, and then you know, you, you're as good as anybody doing what you do. Doing it that you way, know, yeah. In my opinion, you know. So. Oh, thank you. If, if you weren't making so much at the, for the state and selling wind magazines, I'd try to hire you, but I don't think I could afford you. <laughs> So, yeah, the kind of the whole point of this was, though, um, we've all evolved over time. And we're going to watch this video in 10 years and probably even have a different answer to what we yeah. would say if we went back in the time machine back to 2002 or 2001. Um, so wherever you're at right now as you're watching this video... Think back to when you started selling and think back to what you would uh, would tell yourself back then and reflect a little bit on where you are now and reflect on where you want to be. Because um, I'm definitely coming to that crossroads because you yeah. were talking about, uh, you know, the state and all that. Um, I've got under two years left and I'll be retiring and I'm bumping up against as you can as you can attest, bumping mm-hmm. up against the amount of room that I have in the house. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so then the question comes in, do I want to make the leap? Do I want to get a warehouse of some kind or a, a you know place of some kind? Mm. Because that would expand the amount of stuff that I could have. Right. But then the other side of that comes in. Not only does it, 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 it expands your space, but guess what else it expands? <clears throat> your debts. <laughs> your bills. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. all of a sudden I've got a, a mortgage to meet. Mm-hmm. Um, or let's say that somehow or other I could find a place and I had the money saved up or whatever. Okay, fine. I've still got to get an alarm system. I've still got to pay property taxes. Right. Yeah. I've still got to... Um, employee. Well, even if I go to employees, I still have to do utilities. Yeah. I have to get internet. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all of those things. And then what am I going to do? Pile boxes all over the floor? <laughs> I've got to go and mm-hmm. buy shelving. Sure, sure. You know, and then all of a sudden you're you're talking about a... You know, even if it, you, uh, I guess unless it were absolutely turnkey, and even then, what are the odds that I'm going to find a place that's turnkey with all the shelving that's the right kind of shelving for what I want? Right. And we've always talked in the past, too, mm-hmm. that a mistake that a lot of us make, and I know you made this mistake, I know I made this mistake, is we don't think long term when we're solving a problem. And by that, I mean, when I first started out, what did I use? I used plastic shelving. I used cheap plastic shelving. Um, You know, and I would go and I would go and buy it because it was $25 or $30 for a piece of sheet. Or I would buy the metal, but it was a real thin metal. And, you know, worked absolutely perfectly when you've got 15 items to put on it. Yeah. But then when you start putting books on it and taking books on and off of it every single day and the yeah. weight from that day mm-hmm. after day after day, guess what ends up happening to that shelving? Bowing, yeah. It starts bowing, it starts breaking, and then one day you come downstairs and you got books all over the floor yeah. and you think to yourself, i got to get shelving. and well, That wasn't bad at last, so you buy that or maybe you buy one step up and now you buy the $40 shelving. Right. Well, if you had just invested in $100 shelving to begin with, yeah, no issues. Yeah. <laughs> you would have had no issues with a $200 shelving. Yeah. Um, so you're going to make mistakes along the way. I've certainly made mistakes. You certainly yeah, made mistakes. Still make it, <laughs> it just happens. So don't get dissuaded uh, by them. Uh, just think back to what you would tell yourself when you started and then realize how far you've come. Uh, you, you've, you've made great strides. You have made great strides. I made great strides. Everybody watching us has made great strides uh, from the beginning. You're going to make more mistakes along the way. It's just going to happen. Try to minimize those. And and that would be probably just a bonus piece of advice I would give to anybody. Um, think a little bit long term. In other words, if you've got the spot in the corner and you say, I've got six boxes of records. Oh, look, this shelving here can hold six boxes of records. Buy the bigger size shelving that can hold eight boxes of yeah, records because right. guess what's going to end up happening you're not going to have six boxes of records forever True. you're going to end up with eight boxes Definitely. um and so on so don't just buy what you have now now i'm not saying go out and buy an entire warehouse when you've got one one 
monster box of crazy. cards, yeah. but um, do prepare for growth. Uh, you'll be very, very surprised and very, very happy that you did so. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Comment down below what you would tell yourself back when you started selling, if, if you could go back in a time machine and, and just give yourself some advice. Definitely be interested in hearing what that was. Do hit the like button. That's advice that always rings true. Yeah, true. And we will see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye.